Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about getting a job in a new language. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hey Frederick, your channel has been a great resource for legitimate dev insight. Thank you so much. I wanted to see if you could make a video for how to go about getting a job in a new language. While I feel like the larger companies are open to candidates without language specific knowledge just from and just having general C computer science skills, I find it's harder for the startups. So for this to make any sense, I think I need to touch a little bit on the normal. I'm doing quotation marks here because nothing's really easy to say that it's always normal, but let's say the normal way a startup and in many cases even the larger companies when they're hiring for specific teams and so forth what their hiring strategy is now i'm not talking about the hiring strategy at a individual level because usually when this may be something that you don't you're not aware of if you are a junior developer and you haven't or you haven't really considered this guys when a company an it company is growing there is usually a hiring process for individual developers but that hiring process isn't arbitrary it's not like the really big and successful IT companies have no thought on what type of people that they need and the type of people they need is not just dictated by raw talent it's not like just because you're really really good uh, that you're gonna get the job because if the company the company has an overall strategy it and that re involves both like their technical roadmap and the finances of uh, of the of the company so what usually happens is that there is a strategy the company has a certain amount of projects or a certain amount of clients and they want to be able to deliver and they formulate an overall hiring strategy for the sort of people that they need within the groups of developers that they have or the different teams so in some cases it's very common that one or two things happens in a startup if uh, if it's a really really small startup you will usually see that there is some random people like they can be at an let's say an arbitrary skill level it can be like super senior people like just one or two people that's really really good or it can be two junior developers who really don't know what they're doing or like they're they're really just creating something and it actually takes off and it becomes something really good right so now the company company starts growing and there's usually one or two, like there are a few strategies here and these things are really really tough because although you might want to hire really really senior staff and get rid of really good developers you might not uh, be able to afford them or you might not be able to find them uh, and if that is the case another very common strategy and that this doesn't have to, one doesn't have to exclude the other you i see like uh, i can go on and on about how my own company has structured this and it's uh, it's the same sort of thing uh, in other scenarios you will see that companies try to go for sort of skilled developers people who are who are good enough to actually do the job because they want to grow as quickly as possible because growth exponential growth or just adding manpower is usually easier if you hire if you're not t married to the idea of dealing with seniors Be and usually when you are hiring like this there's only there's always two things that factor in in this process and the first thing is do I actually need a senior and can I, can I afford or find a senior? And the second thing is, what is the minimum amount of skill I need from a developer to benefit my company here and now? Now, this is really important because if you are trying to get into a company where the composition of the company is not in your favor, the timing is going to be off. And that's the key thing to getting a job as some, if you ask me at the very least, in a company where you may not be a master of the language. Because if the company is hiring right now to find senior developers, because they've been hiring quite a lot of mid-level or like people who are newbies in a language, like because they just needed people to deliver on their deadlines, so they just needed people that were good enough. Well, and if you come along then and you're also sort of good enough or you're not really familiar with their tech stack, 
that you may not it may be a bad timing for them to hire you because what they really need right now is to fill out their ranks with really senior developers so that they can balance out the composition of the company because they understand that it's kind of hard to scale up a company to really large sizes with by just having a lot of people who sort of know what they're doing you need to mix in a few seniors here and there or language experts as I like to call them in some languages you actually do really need this I wor I've, w I've worked with companies where the language that they picked was so obscure that it was almost impossible to find a senior developer it practically impossible they had a few one, the founder was one of them which was lucky the few masters of the language and that was enough for them to be able to start hiring in bulk people from other languages because they knew that we don't really have an option of hiring enough seniors so we're gonna have to train these people in this new language but that was fine because they had a good balance they already had a few masters that could spread spread their knowledge and actually make sure that the whole thing was a success so what I want you to take away from this is that if you're trying to get a company get a job in a company where they're using a language where you may not be a master of that language where it's a new language to you don't be so uh, the the basics always apply here if you have strong core skills like in in another language and you're just sort like in the, you're familiar enough with the stack that they are using that's usually all you have to do in order to be eligible to actually find that job I've said this before guys you don't have to be a master of every single programming language to apply for a job you just have to be really good at the core skills and be able to adopt those new tools and get to a point where you can sort of do the work because before you know it you will be able to pick up all the differences between your language and that other language and be able to produce results but when you're dealing with a company and they're hiring different uh, sorts of developers you have to remember that timing and in many cases company values because some companies do actually have a value system that doesn't favor you in this scenario but mostly it's a timing issue if you're finding it hard to find a job in say a startup consider that they may not be able to use you right now because they can't afford you or they really need to get some people in to balance the whole equation and you might actually get the job later guys I've been in situations where we've had I work with a coworker right now who we they were he touched the ground with us a year before he actually got the job because the timing was wrong and then the timing was right and then we hired him and he works with me right now so that's something to remember you may actually be able to work in that company it's just that right now they're looking for a master programmer who can really do the job or maybe they're hiring a lot of lesser skilled developers because they want to scroll the company without increasing cost too much by hiring a lot of seniors it's all it all comes down to the composition and the overall hiring strategy of the company have a great day